Simple Cafe Illustrated Tutorials Short and Sweet. Oh, USB. And I mean, oh, not some new type of USB, don't worry. Anyway, today we're going to get a definitive understanding of USB ports on our TV sets. Because I know the first time that I saw these on my TVs, I was pumped. Awesome. Now I'm going to be able to play all my media through this little thumb drive right on my TV. And perhaps maybe I'll even be able to connect my computer. Well, no, never that. Sorry. But today we'll sort out what we can do with USB ports. Because I remember back in the day, every time I eagerly went to plug in a thumb drive, nothing would happen. It always turned out to be a USB port just for the sake of service, such as upgrading the TV, I supposed. But I mean, I never used the port for that. Did any of you? Turned out being a wasted effort. I'm betting that the intention was to use it for upgrading TVs, but then smart TVs appeared, right? So no longer did you need to send data through this thumb drive, instead you could do it through Wi-Fi. Speaking of which, did anybody ever have to update their TVs with an update TV button or anything like that? But okay, if TVs no longer were going to use USB ports to upgrade, then why is it that USB ports were still in so many TVs? After a few years, I would still plug them in with this shred of hope and still nothing. Or so I thought. Turns out that if your TV doesn't seem to be doing anything, like play media, what the USB must be doing at the very least is providing 5 volts of power. Well that's great huh, but uh, I don't know about you, but I think most electronics are going to require more than a measly 5 volts. Until we take into account tiny media players such as Roku's, Fire Sticks, Google Chromecast, or other media players. First of all, let's make clear that we know that these connect to TVs with HDMI connectors. Which by the way, a lot of these media players have the HDMI connector integrated into the body of the device. Making it look like just a standard thumb drive, right? But obviously they're not. They are still media players which require an energy source to work. And luckily, all they require is 5 volts. So if your media player was connected to an AC plug, well you can go ahead and get it out of there and leave room for another device. Because again, these little media players only require 5 volts and hey, what a lucky coincidence, right? Just the perfect amount that your TV can provide. There we go. Now, you'll usually plug them through a USB type B micro connection. At some point, they may come to be connected using type C, who knows. The important thing is that on the other end of the cable, it's a USB type A. Because that's what these TVs are asking for, USB type A. And with a setup like this, your entire media player is all out of the way and practically invisible, leaving you more room for all of your junk on your TV counter. But let me reiterate that if you're looking to get power from a TV, make sure that the port isn't labeled something like any of these. As you can see when I plug in this media player into the wall, a little light indicator comes on. And when I plug it into this particular USB port, nothing. Because again, this USB port in particular is just a service terminal. Okay, finally, what about playing our media through USB ports? Well, to be honest, I have encountered more TVs that will read slash play my thumb drive content, which is nice, but how are we supposed to tell and know that that particular USB port is going to be able to play our content? Is there one label to label them all? I've looked behind many a TV to confirm what a USB reader will be labeled as, but there doesn't seem to be a solid agreement. I mean, even the ones that are labeled USB may still only be there to feed 5 volts, not doing any particular kind of playing. What I can tell you for sure is that if it says something like service, it's not going to read your content. Yet honestly, at the end of the day, the only way to know for sure is to just plug it in and see what happens. But even if it does, isn't it a little pointless by now, now that practically all content is available already through our smart TVs? Well, not all content, eh? For example, your very own pictures and home movies. Which, by the way, I've already made a video detailing how to move all your content from old tapes to digital. 
I'll leave this video for you here. And if you have one of these cameras, guess what? I already found a way for you to plug your SD memory card directly into your TV. The video for that one is just below. Okay, see you on the next one.